This is Mazari Sharif in northern Afghanistan, the country's fourth largest city. Radio Rabia Balhi is one of the city's most popular. Its staff is comprised exclusively of women journalists. Many of them were banned from working during the time of the Taliban. Since the fall of the Taliban in 2001, millions of women have joined the workforce, particularly in the field of medicine and health, where women make up more than 50% of providers. Dr. Maria Razma is a recent graduate of Balkh University with her own private practice in the city. Saraya Dalil is Minister of Public Health, the first woman to be appointed to the position in Afghan history. We have seen a progress, a tremendous progress in terms of saving lives, in terms of making sure that women, when they gave birth to babies, survive and uh, uh, stay alive from, from pregnancy and childbirth. Afghanistan's 1964 constitution promised greater freedom for women, giving them the right to vote and run for elected office. Society, however, was slow to adapt, and decades of war undercut progress. But it was the rise of the Taliban in 1996 that destroyed any vestige of advancement. They instituted a fanatical repression of women, forbidding them from gaining education or working outside the home. With the Taliban swept from power, professional women began to emerge from the shadows. Today, almost three million girls are enrolled in schools, and the World Bank estimates women make up nearly 20% of university students. Saraya Paksad is a well-known women's rights activist and a 2008 recipient of the International Women of Courage Award. Generally, um, violence against women is dramatically continue in the country, even though women's rights uh, isn't in the top of the agenda. Apparently, in all constitutional framework, women are in the agenda. But when it goes to the implementation practices, still there is a long way to go. But she's worried. Despite increased freedoms, she says violence against women continues and often goes unreported. Across the nearby mountain from Kabul, this young woman was executed by Taliban militants for refusing a marriage proposal. Even among the more enlightened cities, prisons in Afghanistan are still full of rural women charged with so-called moral crimes, generally runaways and rape victims, whose families refuse to help them. Many raise children behind bars. But even this may change as women rise through the ranks of law and justice. 50-year-old Colonel Jamila Baez was just appointed a district police chief in Kabul, 
the highest ranking female cop in the country. Thousands of women are studying law at universities in Afghanistan. As they integrate professionally into society, changes will impact both the courts and law enforcement, allowing women to move into traditionally male occupations. Lisa Gosi Noristani runs Mutaharek Construction Company, one of Afghan's largest construction firms. But Nuristani believes the task of rebuilding Afghanistan is too important to leave out women. She employs more than 100 working women and sees a strong future. While some Afghans are wary of the future after U.S. troops leave, many still believe in a bright future. Afghan girls and women share the same dream.